Hello, whether you're um, at home or at school, uh, my name is Father John and I'll be leading the assemblies uh, this week, which are on the theme of Candlemas. Um, I'm a priest at St. Lawrence in Eastcote. Now, let me share my screen with you so we can make a start on this assembly. So we're thinking, as I said, about Candlemas. Today's assembly focuses on the action depicted in this stained glass. Mary and Joseph have brought the infant Jesus to the temple 40 days after he was born. Also there, they meet an old man who spends a lot of time praying in the temple. He's in red here in this image, along with Anna, a prophetess, who's at the back left of the image. Simeon's spirit tells him that the baby who's arrived is someone special. The words he speaks predict the future for this child and for his mother. So remembering that Simeon followed the promptings of the spirit, um, let's take a moment to be still and listen to God's spirit as we start this act of worship together. So I invite you to sit back in your seat so that both your sitting bones are level on the chair, to place both feet on the floor in front of you, and to lengthen your spine so that you feel your chest lift and your neck extend. And then to get your posture right, imagine there's a piece of string at the back of your head, pulling your head up. I invite you to close your eyes. As you take a breath in through your nose, Notice a feeling in your tummy moving outwards and of your chest moving up. And then breathe out through your mouth. I'm going to ask you to do that again another uh, three times. So breathe in through your nose. And out through your mouth. And in through your nose. and out through your mouth. And hopefully you're now feeling uh, still and centered, so return your breathing to normal. Candlemas. Candlemas has this name because it's the day on which candles are brought to church to be blessed ahead of their use throughout the year. As we listen to the story that inspired Candlemas, See if you can work out what the connection is between the story and the candles. Reading from Luke's Gospel. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves and two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, this child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. So 
So what's the link between the reading and the candles? Well, um, one thing that Simeon says to uh, the child Jesus and to his parents is that he is going to be a light for revelation to the Gentiles. Simeon speaks these words to God and describes the child Jesus as a light to all nations, to the world. The thought that comes from this is that Jesus is the light of the world, bringing warmth and helping people to see the love of God, which otherwise would be hidden. Mary and Joseph went to the temple about 40 days after Jesus' birth to do two things that the Jewish religion required of them. First, Mary would have been deemed unclean from a religious point of view. A visit to the temple was necessary so that she'd be cleansed through the offering of a sacrifice. For Jesus, Pidion Haben needed to be performed, redemption of the firstborn. In the Hebrew scriptures, God declares that every firstborn son belongs to him. A boy's parents needed to buy back their child from God by making an offering of five shekels. The alternative would be that the child would remain in the temple to serve God as a priest. And you can see an image of um, Pidion Haben uh, being done by Orthodox Jews in the picture that's on the screen as they follow the law of Moses. So Mary and Joseph do both things. They take Mary for purification. They take Jesus um, for this redemption uh, ritual. You might think of it as being a little bit like people's traditional understanding of chris christening. Rather than thinking about it as baptism, the point of entry into the Christian faith, parents often think of baptism as asking uh, God for protection or blessing on their child. But Simeon does something afterwards which is really unexpected. Not only has God's spirit called Simeon to the temple, but the same spirit gives him an insight into who this baby is and what his life will be like. Simeon tells Mary that her son is going to upset the normal order of things. Those who are powerful will be brought low. People who are poor and unimportant, they'll be given centre stage. Simeon says that a lot of people will be against Jesus and that their hidden motives and commitments will be exposed by Jesus' life and actions. If you like, what Simeon sees is that Jesus will open a window into people's hearts. For some, an uncomfortable experience, having their inner feelings and motivations made apparent. So Simeon speaks of Jesus' future what of your future? How does this connect with you? Now, you may have a wise person like Simeon in your life who's spiritually alive and can help you to see what your future might look like. Or there may be less reliable things to fall back on to think about the future. Certainly what's important is to look within yourself and see what the thoughts of your hearts are, where those thoughts will lead you. You'll certainly want to think about how you can be light for the world, bringing hope, peace and love to a world which desperately needs it. How might you best do this? I'd encourage you as you listen to your hearts to ask also for the kind of inspiration which Simeon received through his prayer and through asking God. If you don't know where to start with listening or praying, I'd suggest that you simply light a candle and spend some time gazing on it. See what that stillness and focus brings to you. And so as we turn to prayer, we're going to still ourselves again. So again, if you sit back in your seat, put both feet on the floor, lengthen your spine, and imagine there's a piece of string on the back of the head pulling it up before you close your eyes. 
Breathe in through your nose. And out through your mouth. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Simeon recognized Jesus as the light of the world. Having told this insight to others, he knew his life's work was complete. So we ask that you would help each of us to know what our life's purpose is and to guide us in small steps each day. May we be lights for this world and bring hope, peace and happiness to others. Amen. Do please open your eyes and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye for now.